YouTube, Sandre here. Now, I didn't think that I would have to make a video on Jordan Peterson again as soon as now. I honestly expected it to take at least another month or two before I felt the need to respond to him again. But hey, what can I say? The guy says stupid shit. He just can't help it, it seems. So you might be wondering, Sandre, what is it this time? What has this guy been saying as of late which has ticked you off this time? Does it have anything to do with religion? Uh, no. Does it have anything to do with politics? No. Is it something that's dangerous, though? Yes. In fact, he has been saying a bunch of things that could potentially be very dangerous for a lot of people, which is why I feel the need to respond. Now, if you are one of those people who don't appreciate my videos against Jordan Peterson, at least perhaps you can set aside your dislike of my videos for this one, because now I'm actually going to do a societal service and explain to you why the so-called all-meat diet is not what it's hyped to be. So first, let's look at a few clips where Jordan Peterson promotes this diet. And not only does he promote it, but he himself and his daughter are on it. Brilliant. Since all of this hit, because when did you stop teaching? Uh, well, oh no, I guess that's not true. That's not true. I, I taught from January to May of, of 2016. Well, the first way it changed was that I was like so, so shell-shocked when I went to to teach last January, that, and I was really sick, like, I'm really sick this year. I had, like, last January, Jesus, it was just dismal, I wouldn't wish that, wish that on my worst enemy. I had three weeks where I didn't sleep a wink. Try that, that's really entertaining. One long day of misery that's three weeks long. What kind of a, an illness? It looks like an autoimmune disorder. Do you think this is because of stress? No, I don't. You don't think no. it's connected at all? Well, yeah, I think it probably made it worse, but no, it's something that I've battled with for a long time, and it's something that really, both my wife and I have autoimmune illness, and my daughter got- What autoimmune good. illness? Don't know exactly what it is. I don't know what it is. Have In you my daughter, it manifest, yes. That's what fixed it. What, what fixed it? Oh, all I eat is meat and greens. That's it. No juice, no, no vegetables, no carbohydrates. Meat, greens. That's it. And that fixed it. That seems to have fixed it. That yeah, fixes so, so many people. Well, I can I tell don't you know if you've uh, listened to yeah, the podcast. I've done yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been following them because my daughter has a blog too called Don't Eat That. And my daughter had a ter <laughs> terrible autoimmune disorder. It was awful. I detailed that out in chapter 12. She had 38 affected joints and she had her hip and her ankle replaced when she was 16. Jesus. So she walked around on two broken legs for a year in excruciating pain. She was on extremely high doses of opiates. And so she was addicted to opiates, which she, like, she just, once she had her surgery, she just went off the cold turkey and, like, suffered through the withdrawal for two months. Compared to what she had been through, that was nothing. Like, what she went through, man, you, it was dreadful. And that was just the surface of it. Like, that was only the beginning of her illness. She had all sorts of other things that were worse than that. And so, and we figured she was probably going to die by the time she was 30, because my cousin's daughter had a similar autoimmune problem. She died when she was 30. So it was bloody dreadful. But she figured out at one point that it was associated with diet, and then she went on a radically restrictive diet, and she... Christ, she, she was on antidepressants, she's not. She had to take Ritalin to stay awake. She could only stay awake about six hours a day and she had to take high doses of Ritalin to stay God. awake. She, what is this autoimmune disease? Well, she had, the, her diagnosis was rheumatoid arthritis. Right. But she didn't have the blood markers for it, but she had all the other symptoms. Anyway, she, she figured out this restrictive diet. She only ate chicken and broccoli for about two months and almost all her symptoms went away. And she's pretty much symptom free now, which is it's a complete miracle. And she convinced me to try this diet about a year and a half ago. And so, I lost seven pounds a month for seven months. That was the first thing, which was what? just bloody amazing. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was unbe I couldn't believe it. You know? well, you, was your diet rich in refined carbohydrates before that? Rich sugars? enough. Yeah. Rich enough, you know. Um, Pastas and bread, yeah, things on those bread, lines. Bread, bread in particular, I ate a lot of bread. Um, so the first thing that happened was I quit snoring. That happened immediately. It took one week and I was snoring quite badly. That, so that disappeared in a week. And that was amazing. I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then I had gastric reflux disorder that went away. And then I lost seven pounds the first month. I thought, oh, that's a lot, seven pounds. I had psoriasis, that went away. I had floaters in my right eye, which is also an autoimmune problem. That went away. Um, I have had gum disease for 30 years. That went away. That went away. That's amazing. I'm 55. Like, my gum disease went away. It's ridiculous. In, in researching some of this, I come across some people where, you know, I, I, thought that this was, I thought that this was too extreme, but then again, two months ago, I would have thought that what I'm doing now is too extreme, so I, what do I know? But um, I've heard people eating, uh, eating raw beef, like, I haven't cooked it. Have you heard that? What do you think about that? I've heard it. I haven't tried it. I probably won't try it unless I start getting symptoms. Right. Like, I, if I got symptoms, I would do whatever it takes to get rid of them again. But I don't have any, so I don't necessarily see the need. But I'm very careful to say, like you just said, to say something silly or something strange because what I'm doing is definitely considered strange. So I don't know if it works for people. There, there might be people out there and that's so like, all right, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't like any judgment on that. So if I'm honest, I did try a spoonful of uh, long ground beef just to try it. I wasn't really a fan of it, just yeah. personally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I at least tried it. Uh, yeah. There, um, 
I've heard some uh, claim, and I'm still looking into this, this is really interesting to me, I don't know if it's all plants or just some plants, but there, there are some people, even uh, medical professionals and stuff, that have claimed there are harmful natural chemicals in certain plants uh, that, that they produce that we eat regularly. And I'm not talking about like Roundup and pesticides stuff, this, this is the thing that the plant will produce uh, naturally, like harmful chemicals. So what are your thoughts on that? Have you done much research into that? Uh, I haven't done much research into that, uh, but yeah, it's true. Some plants are harder for us to consume because they do produce natural pesticides so that us won't eat them or anything won't eat them. Um, so that could be part of the problem. Right. Um, I'm probably leaning more towards microbiome problems. So we're missing the gut bacteria diversity that we're supposed to have in order to tolerate some vegetables. I also think years of eating grain, like people aren't supposed to eat grain. I mean, cows can eat grain and they have a whole bunch of stomachs. Like, they're not like us at all. Right. Um, so I think years of eating things like that mess you up. And sugar, right? Stuff like that. Even dairy, like, I don't think that's something we're really supposed to be eating. And then people say, oh, well, we've been eating this for 10,000 years. Well, what's 10,000 years? Like, really, in the grander scheme of things, that's not very long. Right. And then, and then you can look at things like people are sick, especially North Americans, right, with autoimmune disorders and mental health issues and cancer and heart disease. Um, and if you look in the animal kingdom, animals aren't sick unless we feed them. That's true. And then they're sick. So that seems like a pretty good argument. I mean, like dogs and cats get cancer too, right? But not feeding them meat, and they are carnivores. Mm. That's actually what they should definitely be eating. And so, like, for some greens, alfalfa. Thing is, I'm not a doctor, nor am I a dietitian. But I am a chemistry student, and I have read Advanced Biochemistry. And in that course, guess what? We learn human metabolism. In fact, I know just as much about human metabolism as a first-year doctor. In fact, in some areas, I went deeper than your average doctor. So trust me when I say that I do understand human metabolism. So let's simplify this. About two to three million years ago, human beings started to eat meat. Before this, our ancestors had pretty much a vegan diet, mostly consisting of berries and such. Then our hominin ancestors started to eat more seeds and nuts, and from there they got more fat into their diet. Now as we started to get less fiber in our diet because of this, our bodies finally learned to deal with meat as well. So the question is, what would exactly happen to your body if you only ate meat? Well, one thing that is for certain is you're gonna get fucking constipated. You see, without fiber-rich foods, such as beans and broccoli, you will get constipated. But that problem in of itself pales in comparison to other, more serious issues. You see, your metabolism isn't really made to be completely absent of sugar. Yes, sugar has gotten a lot of bad rap in the media as of late, rightfully so, we do get too much sugar in our diet. That being said, there is a reason why your body's default mode is to transform carbohydrates into simple glucose. Without these carbohydrates, your body is going to burn fat and break down very important proteins. Now, there is a way for your body to create glucose from protein. This is known as gluconeogenesis. This is what happens in your liver, for instance. In this process, you produce nitrogen which you then get rid of in the urea cycle, as it's transformed into urea. If you get too much, this can lead to protein poisoning. Thing is, in times of extreme survival, it's actually advised that if the only source of meat that you can get in the wilderness is rabbit, you're probably better off not actually eating the rabbits at all and just starving until you're rescued. That's because rabbit is a very skinny meat, hardly containing any useful fat. And the thing is, you don't just need carbohydrates in your diet, you need fats as well. And even though there's plenty of meats out there that contain a lot of fat, it's not certain that you will get all the fats you actually need from the meats. Some fats are very common in things such as nuts and vegetables, and very hard to come by when it comes to meat. Another concern is vitamin C. You see, humans can't synthesize vitamin C. We need it in our diet. Scurvy was a huge problem when it came to sailors on the open sea because they didn't get any citrus fruits. When people figured out the correlation between a lack of fresh fruit and scurvy, sailors were actually forced to drink raw lemon juice in order to not get scurvy. Now, you could potentially get enough vitamin C if you only ate meat. Here's the kicker. You would have to eat that meat raw. Because only by eating the meat raw do you actually preserve the vitamin C in the meat. Whenever you cook the meat, the vitamin C is destroyed. Without vitamin C, you can't create collagen, which is a structural protein. It's found in your skin, your ligaments, and your tendons. The thing is, though, there is a type of meat you could eat to get enough vitamin C. When it comes to the blubber of whales, you can have 36 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. 
Now this is more than the 10 milligrams per 100 grams that you would need to avoid scurvy. When it comes to the Inuits, they actually do have a primarily meat-based diet. But here's the thing. You can eat intestine. For instance, the liver of animals to get vitamin A. This way you can also get vitamin D. And fish, as we all know, is rich in omega-3s. But the thing is, the Inuits have actually adapted to this diet in a way that most other populations on Earth hasn't. They have a bigger liver, and they also produce more urine to get rid of the increased amounts of urea. Jordan Peterson and his daughter, I guarantee, do not have this evolutionarily developed mutation in terms of metabolism. So, to conclude, could you potentially live on an all-meat diet? Yes but you would have to be an Inuit. And here's the kicker. Modern Inuits, for the most part, don't actually eat their traditional diet. Most of them have gone over to actually eating a more normal diet with vegetable. Do you know why? Because it's still better. Yes, even though their bodies have technically developed over tens of thousands of years to more efficiently have an all-meat diet than most people, their bodies still do better, in general, by simply having vegetables. So, do I, Sandre, condone the all-meat diet? Fuck no. Maybe instead of focusing on telling people to clean their rooms, maybe Jordan Peterson should instead do something actually useful and tell them to eat their fucking vegetables. Mm -hmm.